it might seem a bit unlikely to, have to discuss politics and especially anarchism in somebody's kitchen, but the reality is that anarchism is not just a pantomime that you enact with a balaclava on the streets. Anarchists are people and anarchism is a practice that most people enact every day in their, uh, of their life in their relationship with their partners, with their friends, and with, with their community, with themselves, and with the environment around them. Hence the idea of doing this in a kitchen, that is, in a normal, non-professionally anarchist place. If we were to describe it with Simon Critchley, we would say that anarchism is a political articulation of ethics, and that ethics is a way in which you bind yourself to an idea of the good, to the responsibility you have towards the other's suffering, the other's existence, or the idea of justice. Simon Critchley is a philosopher teaching at the New School in New York. According to his own definition of himself, he's a well-dressed, post-Kantian, cosmopolitan metrosexual, but there is more to him than that. He's a writer interested in philosophy as well as politics, anarchism in particular. But I believe the most interesting thing is that Simon Critchley is also a popular philosopher. To be a popular philosopher means to ground your philosophical investigation not just in the academia, but in the real world and in the real lives of real people and in their necessities dreams and desires. Critchley understands politics, as he says, as an interstitial distance within and against the state. This kind of idea of politics is anarchist, specifically neo-anarchist. While classical anarchism, the anarchism of Bakunin and Kropotkin and so on, was a philosophy of freedom which had as its main objective the destruction of the state, the neo-anarchism of Critchley and many others is a philosophy of responsibility which aims at creating a space of autonomy within but against the state. How does this interstitial space within and against the state happen? When such groups appear, they have to deal with the state, the corporations and the, and the forces that are set up against them. They do so with what Simon Critchley defines as non-violence and non-violent warfare in a way, which is typically uh, joyous, colourful, humoristic. Um, comic almost, the clown army is, is a typical example of that. On the other hand, they are able within this space of semi-autonomy that they manage to create for themselves to enact that infinite demand and responsibility for each other's well-being by being able to care for each other. This book was published years before the Occupy movement. Interestingly, it describes many of the practices that were put in place by the Occupy movement it is not a coincidence that David Graeber, the inventor of the slogan of the 99%, and Simon Critchley are very good friends, and David Graeber is often quoted in the book. The relevance of this book today, after the age of the Occupy movement, maybe, um, is has to do with the question, what can be done when nothing can be done? In a moment in which the social movements seem to be utterly powerless in front of the forces of the state, of multinational corporations, and of financial capitalism, the feeling of powerlessness could be overwhelming. Simon Critchley's book offers the possibility of imagining action even within powerlessness, of embracing powerlessness as a powerful moment. This interstitial distance doesn't require any specific settings to take place. It's not like parliamentary politics that requires a parliament or a party. It can happen everywhere, including a kitchen. Maybe exactly in a person's domestic environment, in a person's everyday life, this anarchic metapolitics, to use Critchley's expression, can start and can grow in your relationship with your partners, with your friends, with the surrounding environment. And then from there, over a cup of coffee, it can lead on.